Without shoes, their feet cracked and gnawed from the blistering cold. They sang, You've got shoes, I've got shoes, all God's children got shoes. When I get to heaven, gotta put on my shoes and walk all over God's heaven. You don't know how blessed you are to have 10 pairs of shoes. I, I, I'm just giving a conservative figure. You understand how blessed you are. Heaven for them was having shoes. When they thought about heaven, they thought of having shoes and walking all over God's heaven. Made in the image of God. They were unschooled and could not have had the concept as developed as we do today. But they knew that down, somehow, deep down, somehow, that there was something more to life than what they were enduring. They, they knew that their dirt cabins could not be it. This can't be home. And so they sang with longing, deep river. My home is over Jordan. Deep river, Lord, I want to cross into over into campground. As they ate their sparse rations after 10, 11 hours of backbreaking work, they sang, don't you want to go to the gospel feast? That promised land where all is peace? Oh, deep river, Lord, I want to cross over into campground. Coming home every night, bone tired to get up at the break of day to start all over again. They sang, gonna lay down my heavy load down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'll study war no more. They sang religious songs and the only accompaniment, listen to this, as they sang their songs, the only accompaniment they had was hand clapping and foot stomping. And I said, ah, that's why, where the hand clapping come from. Came from the slaves singing their religious songs to give them strength and courage to continue that drudgery of a life. They clap their hands and they stomp their feet as they sang. I know, I know specific churches that have banned the clapping in church. They have actually taken an official style of banning it. And I said, ah, oh, there is something to this because of where it came from. Uh-huh. Think about that. Where it came from. Ellen G. White, they, they, they sang these religious songs, they, they, they sang not only religious songs, they sang also work songs, which helped them ease the burden of difficult labor. And I said that was right on target because Ellen G. White says, I quote, music rightly employed is a precious gift of God. Did you hear that? Designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes. The slaves had it right as they sang their religious song. Uplift their thoughts to high and noble themes to inspire and elevate the soul. That's what they did. She said further in uh, Ministry of Healing 254. She said, Song is a weapon that we can always use against discouragement. It did. When you feel discouraged, she says, take a hold of one of those hymns and if, 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 you, if, you, can't, if you can't sing it, good, call Topeka and ask her to send her daughters across to your home. Let them sing, Let them sing for you. She said, song is a weapon that we can always use against discouragement. 
as we thus open the heart to the sunlight of the Savior's presence, we shall have help and blessing. Wow! Did you hear what she said? So, help and blessing. They knew what they were doing. Then they used the drums. Follow me. Listen to this. Drum beat not only accompanied chants and dances, but was also used to send the messages. By striking and holding the drums in certain ways, drummers could replicate, replicate the tones of speech almost exactly. These were skilled guys. <clears throat> Listen to this. Fear of slaves communicating through these uncanny sounds led whites in several regions to outlaw slave drumming. No, you, 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 you're missing something. He said, that's why we hated drums so much. That's where it's coming from. The whites say, no drumming, it's outlawed. And that filtered down, and so some of our own black people, we see the drums as symbols. That's where it coming from. It was our Lord. The drums were our Lord because they were scared of it. Because the slaves used to communicate with, with, with the drums. Uh, yeah. But it's a beautiful instrument. If you struggle. I, 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 I listened, I, I, I paid attention this morning especially, and uh, when they were singing, uh, which, one, which one it was, I was listening to the drums. Um, it, was, it was just beautiful, and in fact, in fact, those, those guys who play the drums, in recent times, they, 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 don't, they don't deafen me, they just how they play. They, they're just beautiful. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when, when, when I read that, when I read that, I said, ah, that may really say why the early Seventh administrators people with this dislike the drums so much. This 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 tells us something. So their religious songs reminded them that they were God's children made in his image. And if we, if we are to survive and thrive in the 21st century, we must do the things that would constantly remind us that we are children of God made in his image. My Christian friends, nothing must entice us to forget the saving truth. No hardship must be allowed to rob us of this fact that we are made in the image of God. No trial, no difficulty, no provocation must be allowed to cause us to behave otherwise than as children made in the image of God. If we stay connected to God, we can reflect the image of God no matter the circumstances. You didn't hear me. I am saying we can reflect the image of God no matter the circumstances. You see, because some of us believe that under certain circumstances, it is okay to behave on Christ's life. You know, and they say, well, Pastor, under the circumstances, what do you expect? As one man said, what are you doing under there? But if you're not, we must always be over circumstances, not under them. No wonder, uh, no wonder Martin Luther King and the, the civil rights leaders had to actually train people how to exercise this principle of nonviolent resistance. You know what they did? They put these, some of the, the guys who were going out to march, they put them against a counter, like if they were, and so and so, and they acted as the white folk, and they, 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 they pushed them, and they called them names, and they harassed them, and they provoked them, goading them to fight back, 
and some of them, even though they knew it was a test, they couldn't handle it. Because when they cursed them and called them those, uh, it, it, it was just inside these black guys to, to, to fight back. And they were training them that this is what you're going to meet out there. And no matter what, we expect you not to retaliate. They had to actually train them to do that. So I'm saying today, I'm saying today, that if we stay connected to God, we can reflect His image no matter the circumstances. Nelson Mandela, for 27 years, he was shut up in a cell. No, you didn't hear me. I didn't say 27 days. 27 years. Think about that. Yet listen to his words. Listen, listen to the words of a man who was put in a cell for 27 of the best years of his life. He said, any man or institution that tries to rob me of my dignity will lose. Amen. Because I will not part with it at any price or under any pressure. No matter what pressure you are put under. No matter the circumstances that you need to behave as children of the Most High God. Men and women made in the image of God. We can only do that as we stay connected to God and have the Holy Spirit in our lives. I see from time to time some of our black folk stopped by the police. And I'm saying in my heart and my mind, just stay calm. Just shut up. Some of them were losing it. And that is playing into the hands of the Lord. They were losing it because they felt they were, they, they, they were not being treated right or, or they were stopped for no reason or another. And they were losing it. And when you lose it, you are playing right into the hands those who want to treat you as animals. We need to stay connected and remember at all times I'm a child of God. I'm made in the image of God. As Michelle Obama puts it this way, she said, when they go low, you go high. She says, when they go low, you go high. You know, uh, Recently, I was in a meeting. This is the seventh day of meeting. And, uh, we, we weren't talking about black stuff. We were talking about the uh, LGBT. Uh, but a white pastor got up and he made a comment. And I said, wow, whoa. And he wasn't talking about us, but he was talking about LGBT. But the statement was enlightening. He said, he who fights for equality will one day fight for superiority. You see where the fear is coming from? He who fights for equality if I allow you to be equal with me, you will one day fight for superiority. And I, laughed, and I chuckled to myself after I thought about it. I said, that is true. Because, because, just the other day, you give them equal rights to vote. Next thing you know, they get the White House, leader of the free world. Are you with me? And doing such a phenomenal job. And the Obamas are still highly respected even today and into the future. But we are talking about remembering we are made in the image of God. Staying connected so that we could behave as children of God. Victor Frankl. A distinguished psychologist and survivor of the shocking cruelty in a Nazi concentration camp 
describes, listen to this, describes trudging through snow, ice, and mud with no socks on his feet and frostbitten toes sticking out through holes in his shoes. He recounts how the Nazis uh, tormented him, beating him and hitting him on the back of the head with a rifle box. And what it was like to witness friends and relatives stuffed into gas chambers or burned alive. He said, then at the end of each brutal, agonizing day, sick with the pangs of starvation, he and his fellow prisoners would be given a cup of watered-down soup with a single pea at the bottom of the cup as their daily ration. He tells of having to sleep in his own excrement. He lived to tell the tale. How did he survive when others died? He said he survived by learning that he can, can control his attitude. And by doing that, controlling his attitude, the concentration camp fell away and his mind was free to roam where he wanted it to roam think about what he wanted to think about. In fact, his mind was as free as the birds. Amen. He said, I quote, the last of the human freedoms is the freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. You want to take that in? The last of the human freedoms is the freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. The Apostle Paul said it this way. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Let's read. Let this one church, let this walk, let this mind be in you, which was also where? In Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. Oh, church, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. I would like you to remember one thing. People can enslave your body, but never your mind. Only you can enslave your mind. Again, it is impossible for them to enslave your mind without your permission. They could overpower you and enslave your body, but they cannot touch your mind without your permission. People can enslave your body, but never your mind. It reminds me of Christ. Suffering that mockery of a trial in the middle of the night was illegal. Standing, his hands bound, being slapped, spat upon, beaten, questioned. But he stood in his dignity in the ugliest of scenes. Falsely accused and unjustly sentenced to death. Yet he never cursed. Some of you curse for far less. He never cursed. He never lost his cool. The ugly, wicked, hellish storm raged around him. But he remained serene. Yeah. 
Oh God, give me the spirit of Jesus. No matter what happened around him, he remained serene. And was it Pilate who said to him, you're not responding, you're not, you're just staying quiet, don't you know? I have the power of life and death. Jesus said, oh, you, you really don't have that. Only God has that. So you don't have that power, really. He never participated even in the slightest way to the ugliness around him. The only thing that could help us to be like that is to remember at all times we are made in his image. Amen. And right now, right now, the Lord of God is human. Right now, some of you know, Pastor, I am not there. Because if certain folks say things to me or say the wrong thing or treat me the right way, I I I I tend I tend to lose it. But 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 I I see this now. I see Christ in the midst of being treated on you talk about being treated on fear. We are we are human beings. He was God. He was God. They spat in his face, slapped him, and all he had to do was snap his fingers and they would be obliterated. But he stood there, serene. And he said, my children need to be connected to me so that even in the most trying circumstances, they can hear my spirit telling them what to do and how to behave and what to say. Today you want to say, Pastor, I'm not there yet, but I want to get there. If that is you, stand to your feet. I want to get there. I want to be serene in the midst of the storm. I want to be able to, to stand stuff and remember all times that I'm made in the image of God. Some of us think that, yeah, we behave as Christians when everything is okay, but when, when they push me, when they, when they are unfair, when, when rough things happen, or when, when people say or do stuff to me that is not right, then, then, then I act up and, and that's okay. No, it's not. We are to be Christ-like, no matter what. And he has showed us the example. In an illegal trial in the middle of the night, he was God. connection with his father. That's why we are here today. Having heaven as our goal. Because he bore that for us. Our heads of our eyes are closed. Father, what a standard. What a standard you have set for us. It is beyond us really. We cannot attain to it. Little things floor us. We are flustered. We, we lose it. We lose our calm. We lose our Christianity. When people don't treat us right. We lose our cool. And, and if, and if, Father, we be honest, we behave in an unchristlike way for far less. But you are training us. You, you are training us for what is up ahead. When, when, you, when you ask the angels holding the four winds of strife to let go, and the devil will have sway upon this earth that he has never had before. Father, you are training us for when our lives would be endangered, when they will threaten to take, when, when they will take our property because we love Jesus. When they run us from a hope, you are training us for what is up ahead. And if if we can't handle the, the ordinary stuff of day-to-day -day living, how are we going to handle what's up ahead? When our very lives are threatened. Lord, we want to be like Jesus. Teach us how to do it. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We know we have 
we, we've got some of the Holy Spirit in us. That's why we're at church this morning. But Lord, some is not even we we need to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. He must be controlling our every action or every thought. So Lord, in the past where we have behaved in an unchristlike way. When we have said stuff or done stuff, Lord, we are asking right now for your forgiveness. Pray, Lord, that you would guide and direct and teach us and hold us so that one day we'll take hold of a hand and find it to be a nail-scarred hand. We'll hear a voice saying, Come, ye blessed of my children, inherit the kingdom prepared for the foundation of the world. Lord, like the slave son, we sing, Lord, we want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. That's why we are in here in this church today. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing our closing hymn. As we look back in history, this song says, All the way my Savior leads me. He has led us. I want to